knowledge. So today on World Teachers Day, we are here to educate our students on what is STEM education. As students, we will be talking about STEM education, but let me all tell you, uh, let me tell you all that there is also uh, another name to it these days, that is STEAM, where this A is introduced, and this team is not James Watt's team, but this A is plus art. So when you integrate art with STEM, it makes it more interesting, engaging, useful as well. And it makes the unreal and abstract things for STEM more real to you. So I will not talk about what STEM education is, but I am here to introduce Professor uh, Basu, who has uh, been through the journey, which was not very easy for her because STEM education is not easy. But however, for you students, let me tell you, uh, you, you should always dream big. So dream more and definitely you will reach more. So to introduce uh, Julie Ma'am, before introducing and reading out her bio note, let me tell you, she is my dear friend. We spent our university days together, but, and I was not aware of the, her journey, which is so very inspiring till I got her bio note because in between we got disconnected for a while. Until now that I just, I found out that we were working for something similar, some one little thing similar that is STEM education because as an award grantee from the US Department, the State Department, I'm working on this uh, nurturing young women in uh, STEM education and ma'am has been doing it for last so many years. I'm really, this is a privilege and honor, ma'am, to have you with us because for you, it's uh, now it's the uh, middle of the night, but still you are awake. Thank you for, the, for that from our entire uh, BDMI family. So currently, Ma'am is serving as a faculty in biology and health sciences at the Christian Brothers University, Memphis, Tennessee, USA. Julie Basu Roy grew up in Calcutta. Her schooling with Calcutta Girls High School graduated from Presidency College and University of Calcutta. Ma'am completed her PhD from the Institute of Medical Sciences, University of Toronto, and postdoctoral studies at the Center of Developmental Biology of the Lung, Department of Pediatrics, University of Buffalo. As a faculty, besides teaching undergraduate students in the USA, her passion has been collaborating across borders using modern technologies. As a part of this, she has served as an international guest faculty. Global Initiative of Academic Network, GIAN, Department of Chemical Engineering, BMS College of Engineering, Bangalore, India, where she taught a short interdisciplinary course. Her other interest is encouraging women in STEM fields. Every summer, she conducts a program where she provides high school students and minority women a platform to learn science by doing hands-on experiments in the STEM fields thereby encouraging them to join STEM workforce in the future. She has multiple teaching grants and publications in peer-reviewed journals. Thank you, ma'am, for giving out your time. And um, over to you. Uh, thank you so much for that lovely introduction, Madhumita. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's around 2 o'clock at night. Uh, but it's lovely to see you all here, and it's uh, really inspiring to see so many uh, students uh, attending these kinds of talks. Uh, and of course, thanks to the uh, initiatives from the institution itself. Uh, so uh, today I'll be talking about uh, women in STEM in particular, and uh, a more glaring question uh, that the world faces today, uh, which is uh, why so few, uh, uh, one of uh, uh, Nobushish, or I don't know if that's the way you pronounce, you said, are you in the USA? Uh, yes, I am. Yes, ma'am. So uh, why are there so few uh, women in STEM? Uh, next slide, please. 
so my talk today would uh, cover these uh, five points. And because it is uh, concerning uh, STEM, so uh, I would have to be very specific and I would have to provide you with data because without data, without evidence, there is no science. So I will start by presenting some data to you and then uh, we'll analyze the situation as to why there are so few women uh, who are there in the STEM fields even today. And this is not a local or a national issue. Uh, this is a global issue. So uh, yeah, we will analyze the situation and uh, of course uh, we uh, acknowledge the fact that this is a problem. So just by saying that there is a problem isn't enough, we have to try to solve it. So once we know the reasons, uh, we will figure out what are the different steps that can be done. And uh, you will be quite surprised to know that uh, the very school that you are enrolled in right now has taken so many different initiatives. And uh, this is a global initiative, uh, which uh, we are taking all over the world. So so uh, the next thing is, uh, as a part of these initiatives, I'll talk about what the women in STEM currently are doing or they have done in the past few years to address the situation. And finally, I would love to share some parting thoughts uh, with you, uh, who would be uh, mainly tomorrow's women in STEM and at the same time tomorrow's men in STEM too. Next slide, please. Uh, so starting with some data. So here is a bar graph. I know you've done bar graphs in school by now, so you would be understanding. So uh, the yellow bars are for the women and the blue bars are for the men. And if we look into this data, this shows about the intent of first year college students uh, to major in STEM fields by gender. And it's not very far back. It's just 2014. So uh, you know, if you look at the bars just to the extreme left, you will understand, you can see that women have actually outnumbered men in case of biological and life sciences. Uh, it's 16% in women versus 11% in men. But if you shift your eyes towards the right and you look at engineering and computer science, you will see uh, that uh, men have outnumbered women drastically. And there is a huge difference in engineering. It's 6% women versus 19% men. And in computer science, it's just 1% women uh, versus 6% men. Uh, so uh, if we look, at, so in the recent years, uh, you know, the field of uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, uh, which we just learned is known as STEM, uh, it has re received a lot of attention uh, for their critical role in maintaining uh, any nation's competitive edge uh, in the global economy. And although the STEM fields are often grouped together, uh, there are important uh, differences uh, uh, in uh, these uh, that exist uh, among these uh, different fields. Uh, yes, one of them pointed out that in physics also uh, there is a difference. Yes, of course. Um, and uh, you're absolutely right in pointing that. Uh, so, uh, and it, it these STEM fields, needless to say, they provide, uh, they offer uh, the best opportunities for the greatest number of people, accounting for more than 80% of the STEM jobs, uh, as well as they offer a higher uh, return on educational investment. I mean, engineers get into jobs way earlier than uh, doctors do. Uh, so, I mean, think about the huge number of IT people uh, that manage U.S.-based product uh, projects uh, from Infosys, uh, TCS, Cognizant. Uh, in fact, basically, uh, the Silicon Valley in California is run by Southeast Asians, right? So, uh, the next slide, please. So, uh, so far we've seen uh, data uh, for taking up engineering or computer science as their college major study. Now, what about the workforce? Uh, forget about the race and ethnicity here. Uh, let me just break it up into simpler numbers. Uh, on your left is the engineering workforce and your on your right is the computing workforce. And uh, so for computer science, it's just 12.24% women versus 88%, almost 88% men. 
And even for the computing workforce, it's about 26% uh, women versus 75% men. Next slides, please. So what's looking at these numbers, uh, you can see what's going on. Are women more dumb? Are they stupid that they do, cannot join engineering works, cannot, are not capable of computer uh, works? So uh, maybe engineering is not meant for women. Well, absolutely not. Uh, th that is a completely false idea. So the numbers don't say that. And this is hardcore evidence. So here are uh, here is the data, and I promise this is the last data that you will see. Uh, that we the left two most bars tells you about the high school graduates and uh, the uh, students who are interested in college and uh, for pursuing higher education. So you can see the very comparable numbers between men and women. It's 51% versus 49% uh, men, 51% men versus 49% women are high school graduates, or 53% women versus 47% men who are getting into college. But as soon as we start looking into the numbers uh, that are in higher degrees or completing the degrees and proceeding further into master's and PhD, we find that the numbers are skewed terribly. There's a scary shift in numbers. So it's just 18% women versus 82% men. So uh, uh, who finally end up doing a bachelor's degree in engineering. In master's degrees, the same thing, 25% women versus 75% men. In PhD in engineering or computing, it's 23% women versus 77% men. Next slide, please. So definitely there is a problem. So, well, what could be the reasons behind this? You know, the first thing is, uh, or even as past uh, few decades have shown, if you simply try to recruit girls and women into existing engineering and uh, computing programs and workplaces, that has had limited success. And uh, studies have shown that uh, women in uh, business roles at uh, technical companies uh, tend to leave at higher rates uh, than their male peers do, suggesting that, you know, the overall workplace culture and environment in technical industries is not very favorable for uh, women. So whether or not they are in technical roles and it's whether you consider college, the academic front or whether it's the workplace. Uh, the institutional structure and the practices um, and more general cultural factors, they contribute a lot to the uh, underrepresentation of women in engineering and computing fields. Uh, one significant factor, um, which is the second one, according to some studies, is an emphasis uh, of, you know, logical thinking opposed to critical thinking uh, in engineering culture. You know, uh, if you look at these engineering courses, uh, they kind of discourage um, thinking beyond the technical uh, parameters of a certain problem. So these engineering students, for example, they rarely are asked to reflect on what they do and why they do it. Uh, whereas if we consider uh, the women, uh, they are more likely than men uh, to express a preference for work uh, with a clear uh, social purpose. So women are more interested in doing work which would have a social implication at the end and just not do it for the sake of doing it. Next could be, you know, isolation. Women in engineering and computing fields, they often report isolation, a lack of voice, a lack of support. Um, companies uh, have found that women uh, were less likely than men to indicate that their supervisors were receptive to suggestions, less likely to say that their supervisors you know, were available when they needed them most. Uh, they are less likely to agree that it is uh, safe to speak up most of the time. And they feel extremely isolated at work so that after a few um, months or a couple of years, they just leave the job. So the other thing could be simple stereotypical surroundings. 
the uh, physical environment in engineering or the computing classrooms and workplaces, th that can create a big difference too. Um, so, uh, you know, instead of putting in uh, gender neutral objects, uh, those uh, geeky things are very male biased. So that could be another thing that uh, make the women uh, hostile in not uh, going into these fields. Social networks, they appear to be less beneficial for women uh, than men. So they are not as strong as uh, the social networks that support men who look for um, these jobs. You ask your uh, mom or any of your aunts, uh, you know, uh, your teachers, uh, your uh, sometimes they will tell you that the most important impediment that a woman faces very often in their work fields is uh, work-life balance. And uh, especially women in engineering and computing. And uh, some researchers would argue that um, work life, it's not really work life balance, it's a culture of overwork. And, uh, and that creates a dissatisfaction among women and men. Uh, but because, you know, culturally women are expected to fulfill the responsibilities associated with home and family and men are expected to be the bread earners, uh, women actually may experience uh, negative outcomes as a result of this uh, culture of overwork more frequently than men do. So no matter how much uh, overloaded with work a woman is, she always needs to go back home and make sure that every, everybody gets food on the dinner table. Uh, challenging academic workplaces, you know, gender discrimination, um, sexual harassment that women face, uh, and that is less likely to affect job satisfaction as well. So, uh, and finally, stereotypes and biases. You know, human beings are often uh, considered as uh, cognitive misers, and uh, we are reluctant to engage in uh, thoughtful, um, in effortful thoughts unless it is absolutely necessary. So, uh, for this reason, stereotypes are very powerful and very difficult to override, and uh, they can actually lead to uh, biased behavior and uh, discrimination. And sometimes this comes from the very from our very own family. Sometimes from parents. Sometimes from teachers. So uh, they have these very typical uh, stereotypical uh, ideas, which is going to discourage women. They'll say that boys are more, much better in math than girls are supposed to. So uh, the next slide, please. And you know, this problem with women uh, facing challenges, it's not just a 2010 or a 2014 year old, um, you know, uh, issue. This has ex existed for several more years than that. You know, while I was preparing for this talk uh, on October 3rd, uh, this Google Doodle came up on my uh, computer screen. And this is actually celebrating the life of uh, Maria Gonzalez, uh, who is uh, globally recognized as an authority in plankton biology. Now, today we are celebrating her uh, feat and achievements, but when she was actually doing her research, life was made extremely difficult for her. First of all, her studies uh, got, um, uh, you know, hindered because of the Spanish Civil War. She couldn't study at that time. Then uh, she, she is uh, doing her research in planktons, and planktons are available in the oceans. So if you, if you don't go to the waters, how will you do the research? But then there was the Spanish law that prohibited women in those days uh, 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 she's uh, now she, she's from Spain, uh, Madrid to be more specific. So uh, she also uh, so um, you know uh, this Spanish law was there uh, that prohibited women aboard these uh, Spanish naval vessels. So uh, she faced several challenges as well, but nothing could stop her ultimately. And she continued to achieve uh, the position that she is now so that Google Doodle, even after so many years, uh, chooses to celebrate her achievements. And in fact, she was the first woman uh, to be ever appointed as a scientist aboard any British or uh, Spanish exploration ship. So now anybody can walk onto a ship, whether you're a man or a woman. Uh, next slide, please. So yes, we have a problem. 
So what are what can we do with it? We have to solve the issue or at least try to, right? Uh, so the first thing is remove the bias. You know, consider ways uh, so that you know to reduce uh, girls and women's uh, science uh, male implicit biases is a potential way uh, to increase the chances that girls and women will develop an interest in these STEM fields. Uh, and the reason uh, why we always you know gift Barbie dolls to girls and cars to boys. So it starts way young and it is we adults who kind of uh, seed those discrimination points in our own kids. Uh, next is, you know, increase in the number of female uh, role models uh, so that, uh, you know, women may identify uh, them and uh, female uh, role uh, models as uh, have been shown. I just missed a comment there. It was interesting. I think somebody said that it's not just the mindset of men, but uh, yes, my mind is actually. Yes, uh, my name is Shijita Roy. Uh, my mind my is Shijita Roy, and uh, I think that it's not only the bias, but the mindset of women as well. Because if they all uh, come all together, the unit together, and they do something against this bias, then nothing can happen forever. Absolutely. As I said, that, that's what I meant, that the mindset of family, mindset of teachers, mindset of uh, the extended your own parents sometimes. So it's not about you. The seed of discrimination is uh, there in, in, ingrained in you even before you realize that there is a discrimination. So that's why we gift Barbie dolls to girls and cars to boys and never the other way around. So... Uh, 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 so uh, I was at the second or uh, second one, right? And then, um, you know, organizations, all these hiring organizations, these workplaces, they should be able to create a, a, a welcoming environment for women as well. And, uh, you know, they shouldn't feel left out uh, when they go to a workplace that they are kind of isolated. They should, should also feel that this is a workplace where I can work uh, with, uh, you know, shoulder to shoulder with men. And so... Um, the college curriculum that can be revised. So apart from, you know, introducing programming skills or computer skills, um, it, they should also emphasize, you know, the practical uh, computer science applications that, uh, you know, uh, these days interdisciplinary learning is very, very important. And as uh, Modumita said, that even art is in a part of STEAM because at the end of the day, science is art as well. What is there in science? All these scientists, what do they do? It's their creativity, their intuition that brings about new discoveries, right? So uh, you ha all bringing everything together and there is nothing called, uh, you know, separate uh, physics, separate chemistry, separate biology, because I'm sure you have learned that an atom in, in physics is an atom in chemistry, is an atom in biology. So that is where the barriers, even in these STEM fields, uh, they disappear. Uh, then, you know, uh, celebration of uh, women achievers. And, uh, you know, uh, you should encourage school students to join these uh, programs. They should be made free to students so that they can see for themselves. It's not about me lecturing you or anyone lecturing you, but you can see for yourself what these people have achieved in their own lives uh, so that they feel encouraged. The other thing is institutional commitment, just like the program that uh, BDM International is hosting right now and why I am here. So that is, uh, you know, uh, because our kids spend more time at the institute in their schools than we do with our parents. So definitely the teachers play a big role in committing, uh, in uh, making these, uh, taking these initiatives or even girls and boys, you can encourage each other too. So uh, finally, you know, introduce uh, gender diversity and uh, inclusivity and, you know, stop these uh, biases that men are better in math. And, uh, you know, there was a common saying that engineering is for guys and home, home economics is for girls. So all those kinds of biases were there. Uh, and in fact, the first chairperson of the home economics, um, I think, section or some society was a woman who was trained at the MIT. So uh, you can understand the biases that we still carry. 
Uh, so, uh, you know, I would always encourage, you know, tinker with things, take things apart and uh, you know, put them back together, cultivate a, a, a growth mindset. So when you challenge yourself, when you work hard, learn new things, uh, your brain forms new connections. That's how our memories are made. And over time, you become smarter and you don't need to be a boy in order to uh, get smarter or have a different wiring. So uh, the next slide, please. And of course, this is from your own uh, school's website. So what I wanted to stress upon you is that, uh, you know, in those top three positions, it's not just Shonchit and um, it's uh, Prothom, but along with that, it's Vrishti, Tiasha, and Shoyong Shiddha as well, who are standing along with those two boys in the same position as they are. So which tells us that there is no difference in wiring in our brains. It's just the way we look at it. And if you work hard enough, you will be at the same position as any others are or higher if you are smarter. The next slide, please. So, uh, you know, I have had my challenges as well. And as uh, Modumita mentioned, I, uh, my schooling was from Calcutta Girls High School. And thereafter, my bachelor's was from Presidency College. Uh, then it's Presidency University now. And uh, my master's was from the University of Calcutta. Next slide, please. So, uh, uh, the next obvious choice, uh, of course, uh, after my master's was a PhD and I wanted to go abroad, either the United Kingdom or here in the USA. And uh, so I passed through rigorous interviews and uh, the final round I remember was in uh, at the St. Stephen's College in Delhi, and it was really bitterly cold in uh, December, and got into the University of Cambridge with a full scholarship. But the letter of acceptance came uh, after my uh, uh, after my wedding uh, date was fixed, and uh, invitation letters had been sent out too. So, and at that time, somehow I did not feel very strongly, you know, towards upsetting everything, and you know go ahead with my PhD in UK. Maybe some of you would be brave enough. Uh, I wasn't. So I got married. And, uh, you know, I cried a lot. I cried a lot that my dreams were being shattered. Here I had a full P uh, PhD scholarship to the University of Cambridge, which is one of the top 20 universities in the world. I worked so hard, but here I'm getting married. So uh, at that time, you know, uh, my grandma told me one thing. Next, please. Next slide, please. You know, she said that, you know, if things happen the way you want it, it's good. But if they do not happen the way you want it, then it's even better because uh, things are happening then according to uh, God's will and God is not your enemy. So he always wishes the best for you. And so maybe you have something better in store uh, for you in the coming years. Uh, so, you know, she tried to comfort me with all uh, these sweet words. Um, next slide, please. So, um, yes, things definitely were better on the other end of the horizon. And I had my son and um, I came to Canada for my husband's uh, medical fellowship. Um, and that was the first time I was leaving my homeland and uh, I was coming to a foreign land. And I did not want to leave my child with a babysitter from the very first day. So I waited uh, till my son was uh, big enough to go to school. So when he is in school, I'll go to my uh, PhD. Um, and after that, I joined my PhD at the Institute of uh, Medical Sciences at the University of Toronto. And um, there is a reason why I put uh, my supervisor's picture, Dr. Michael Ward, and he's no more. While I was doing my PhD, he passed away. Uh, he had he was suffering from a brain tumor. So uh, and I'm so, so indebted to him because for even before I joined his line, uh, uh, his lab, um, he kind of inculcated that sense of pride in me. And I felt that what I lost wasn't completely lost uh, from my life. So um, interestingly, during the interview, he asked me uh, what I was doing between my master's and then, because there was a gap of four years in between. And you know, you know, in these days in the CV, you would just have to put things one after another. You cannot afford to put gaps of even six months, because if you put a gap of six months, the recruiters would think you are lazy 
or you are too uh, busy you do not know who you are you do not know what you want then you are rejected and i had a gap of 4 years in between so he asked me uh, what was going on and i was kind of mumbling because i you know i didn't want to say this was an academic interview i didn't want to say that i was only taking care of my son that was a very very you know an unglamorous naive kind of a thing so um so i still said i was taking care of my son was young and uh, you know when you don't uh, you you're not specific you say 10 words instead of two so i kept mumbling and he comforted me uh, by saying uh, atriparna uh, hold on to your question let me finish and then i'll take all your questions okay so and uh, you know i kind of felt bad and uh, he comforted me by saying that uh, you don't need to apologize be proud that you were a dedicated mother that's it and in fact it was he who first uh, pointed out to me uh, that i should include my university of cambridge award in my cv and then right next to it award declined i didn't know this was a point uh, this was something that goes into a cv i didn't do that so why should i include that but he said you should do that and he said that you have earned that offer so there is nothing to be shy in declaring it and uh, that you did not accept that is a different issue and from that moment onwards you know i felt so proud of an achievement that i never really pursued so it wasn't really gone and uh, the next slide please so you know what were the challenges that i faced uh, well the first you know you have to take courses in your phd too at least the first two years uh, so the first class for one of my courses you know uh, that was a big challenge because i thought i was old because i had a gap of 4 years remember and uh, i would be older than the fresh students they wouldn't be as old as i was and um, the second uh, challenge was that i had not been in didn't turn a single page of any science books or anything for 4 years and uh, so how would i perform you know amidst a class full of students 99.99% were white american people and maybe they would think how unsmart i was and you know once you step out of the country you carry your country along you are a representative of your own country in a foreign land so uh, you know and the third uh, most important thing was accent i was so scared and remember this was years before you were born and there was no netflix at that time so you could see hollywood movies without subtitles and know how they speak so accent was a big thing but i was really really determined and i think that determination is very important and i kept remembering what my father used to say that uh, time and opportunity waits for none so here i finally had the opportunity to do my phd and i would not let anything ruin it so uh, you know in a foreign land uh, without any relatives i was with my son and i completed my phd because one year uh, into my phd my husband uh, left to do pursue his higher studies in another city in boston so i stayed back to finish my phd with my son and my son was completely dependent on me so and the other thing is uh, you know remember in life sciences you are working with cells or with rats or whatever and uh, they don't listen to you you listen to them so if your son is sick and you cannot go to the lab the next day and your cells were uh, ready to be uh, processed the next day you couldn't everything is ruined you go back and start all over again so it's like two weeks of work gone down the drain so uh, well after all that i still uh, still completed my phd and uh, next slide please and a postdoctoral at uh, SUNY Buffalo next slide and um, after all my academic pursuits now was the time for a proper job uh, so uh, meanwhile we moved to new orleans and uh, my aim was to be a college professor i have always been very passionate about teaching in fact the earliest memory that i have of playing games at home was you know uh, spreading all those old notebooks of previous school years and uh, you know teaching an imaginary group of students and uh, of course i had the backing of my genes we have a couple of teachers in our family my grandfather was a university professor my father was a university professor um so i started sending out uh, my cv and uh, 
uh, met with the uh, coordinator of biology at Dillard University. And the reason why I'm telling you this, why I'm not there anymore, is because of a very funny thing. Uh, so we had an initial, a very casual conversation. And then I went to India for my vacation. Now, who checks emails uh, when you are on vacation? So one day I was casually checking my emails uh, when I saw this mail from the coordinator, uh, which told me that my interview, this job interview was scheduled uh, two days later. So because I was in, in, in India, it would be a video interview, just like the way I'm meeting with you now. So challenges again, this was uh, mid or end June, which is the monsoon season in India. So which means if it starts to rain, any moment the Wi-Fi will be disconnected. And this is like years before where the Wi-Fi was not as strong as it is now. So in India, the second thing was I didn't know I would have an interview. So I had no foreign, uh, you know, formal clothes like suits and everything. So, uh, and the third thing was I had to make a full lesson plan. And for that, I needed books, something, some reference material to make out a whole class plan. So, uh, and of course, the greatest thing, the time difference. So remember, when it's uh, daytime there now, it's past midnight here in USA. So the interview would be held in USA time, which means daytime in USA is past midnight in India. So on the day of the interview, past midnight, in my informal clothes, because I do not have any formal clothes, I pulled down all the pictures from my parents' bedroom wall and sat there for the interview. And then there were two, there were five people in that interview of like of those five people, three of them said something and I couldn't understand their accent. So I continued to refer them as sirs because I cannot ask them what, what, what is your last name? That's very rude. Anyhow, somehow I got the job offer. So I continued teaching there. And after that, I moved to Tennessee. And uh, right now I'm serving as a college faculty at uh, Christian Brothers University. So uh, next slide, please. So while at uh, Dillard University, and I'm really grateful to uh, the presidential professor, professor there, Dr. Darvish, who actually, you know, one day when I was, uh, I just got off the elevator and he said that, uh, you know, Julie, do you want to do something uh, to encourage women in STEM? And at that point of time, I really didn't know that, uh, you know, something, this was such a glaring problem. That's my stupidity. And uh, so I said, I just love doing things, I, these kinds of things besides, you know, hardcore teaching. So I said, yeah, sure, I can help you out. So I started reading about it and I, uh, uh, you know, thought that this uh, could, this, I could help in uh, encouraging women in, uh, to uh, pursue a career in STEM. And uh, so although I have moved on from Dillard University, I still uh, continue to teach uh, the do you wishes program in fact the name do you wishes was given by me it uh, spells out as a women in stem high school experience in summer and it is a program that provides uh, female high school students with hands-on uh, experience in stem related uh, experiments and activities uh, with the goal of uh, inspiring their pursuit uh, um, you know in a stem career a couple of those you will listen uh, to a talk that uh, is coming up next so, um, and just to let you know, uh, next slide, please. And we started off uh, with Dr. Darvish's own funding and could only support six students at that time because it was coming out from his own uh, grant money that was, wasn't dedicated to this. And we started with six students and um, later on uh, air force nasa started uh, funding it and uh, we could go up to as many they wanted us to uh, go ahead and increase that uh, you know capacity to 56 students and you know uh, this year uh, which is our sixth year even the pandemic couldn't stop us so um, if you could hit enter once more please so we actually conducted this uh, summer program uh, through zoom 
and um, we actually we posted those uh, different kits uh, to these uh, students so that they could do them at home and we were kind of it, it was tough but we still did it most of the colleges and universities canceled their summer program but looking at the responses uh, we couldn't so we had to hold it over zoom so uh, the next one please so, uh, you know, what would be our take home uh, message from this talk? And I've been talking for quite some time now. Um, you know, I was reading this book this summer and uh, by Camille and she's a NASA rocket scientist. And uh, I think the title of the book would be a perfect message uh, for today that step out of the box, uh, chart your own course and leave a mark on our world. I think that kind of best summarizes uh, uh, you know, encouraging uh, women in STEM and encouraging uh, men to support the women if they ever need to who pursue these STEM careers. Next slide, please. But you know, this picture, I'm sure you all have seen it, uh, uh, this before, uh, is my biggest inspiration. That even in uh, these uh, Kanjivaram saris and these gajras and the hair, I mean, look at these scientists. They're so full of joy and glee and uh, so full of, uh, you know, the satisfaction of achieving something and, you know, powering India's uh, Mars mission. And so if they can, uh, I think anybody can, which brings us uh, to the end of my talk, the last slide, please. And this would be my uh, parting thought that if she can, and this she refers to all, any and one and all the women that I've been talking about, uh, so can I, and this I refers to you, of course, with a clause, next slide, please. So just by thinking uh, wouldn't help, you have to do it as well. So which brings to the last clause that I will. So uh, that brings uh, to me to the end of my talk and uh, one last parting uh, thing in uh, Bengali, as Akarunami uh, Kolkata Bangali, Kajay Tumra Jara Bangla Bojo, Kalki Mohalaya, Shuturang Tumra Shabai, who won on the Koro Pujote, Shabdhane, Avashoi, Kub Bhaloka to Pujo, Oni Konik Bhalovasha. Those who did, do not understand Bengali and must be wondering what I have been mumbling. Um, happy Navratri. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, ma'am. 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 Thank you, uh, Thank Professor you. Basu Roy, Thank you. though I'm used Thank to you call so you much. Julie. And uh, it's been a fantastic session. Thank you, uh, your Thank journey you so is definitely inspiring. As I mentioned in the beginning, half of it I was aware of, and the, the remaining part I was also not aware. And I'm sure the students who have heard you, they will uh, do it, they will make a mark, and uh, they will dream big and they will realize more and they will do more for themselves so with this we move on to the next part of the presentation by Mui ma'am and uh, to the professor uh, i'm sure you are almost um, you're very tired after your hectic day and through this presentation in the middle of the night i'm eager to know what is the time there now it's 2 46 so i, so I would have to just get up in the morning so i would uh, yes. kindly excuse me uh i have heard your talks uh i'm talking about uh Rinmui, uh and uh samira if i'm not mistaken yes. um yes. and um uh, so thank you so much everybody and uh sorry i couldn't stay back in this session till the end but i did hear you talk and uh it's really very very interesting so good luck to you all and uh hope to see you all when i finally i managed to go to india yes, thank you yes. thank you thank much. you so much and on Bye behalf of bdmi family my heartfelt gratitude for spending thank time you. for thank us you so thank much. you so much bye bye thank you ma'am bye ma'am so over to you, ma bye ma'am ma'am shall we leave no please don't Please don't, because uh, Rinmoy ma'am and Samira uh, ma'am will Arunavu. talk about Arunavu. coding and how okay. interesting the workshops that will follow, what will they be about. So just go through it.
Uh, okay, Rinpoche, ma'am, ma you could cut down your presentation uh, from the beginning. Uh, just go it, uh, make it a little faster because it is uh, that part of it has been already spoken to uh, all of us by Julie, ma'am. So if we go uh, straight away, go to the coding part of it. I think that would be great. So just see how uh, we can go through the Mentimeter uh, polls and uh, go okay. ahead with the coding and the language part that you have spoken. Okay, ma'am. So uh, good afternoon to one and all. Uh, it is said that education is lighting a fire. So no wonder we have steam right now. So to light the fire, we will be having a link in the posted in the chat box. Students, please click on it and give your responses. We would like to know how much, how many of you actually know <clears throat> know about STEM. <clears throat> Class 8, we would like to know how many of you are right now aware of STEM. So click on the link posted in the chat box. Okay, ma'am. I'm done. Okay, you will use the chat box, I repeat. So whatever answers you have to give, you will write it in the chat box, okay? Okay, so most of us, I guess, we are aware about STEM. For those and also those students who have a little confusion about what is STEM. Yes, so maximum students already know, are aware about STEM. Thank you, Rajeshri ma'am. Let us come back to the presentation itself. So just a, a uh, you know, recap, STEM is science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Promita ma'am, if you can just start with the presentation. Basically, the education, the STEM education relates to these four subjects and how we can intermingle them into an interdisciplinary curriculum. So when do we, or what is the importance of STEM? You have already gone through it, how ma'am, uh, you know, went through the STEM education and her applications in her future life. So, ma'am, let us just go forward a few uh, slides. Next one. Yeah, so by observation, in imagination, brain function, creativity, concentration, all of this will increase when we study STEM, so it will make you more confident. Next slide. Next one, ma'am. This is what uh, STEM education helps us to do. Ask, imagine, plan, create, test, and improve. So what can we do to make us better? And what can we do to make the project better? So this is what will be helpful. Ma'am, next slide. How do we relate STEM in school? Is it the is it is STEM education only for the college going students? No, it helps us to towards opportunities, occupations, and continued education in the collegiate level. How do we relate it? Ma'am, next slide, please. Ma'am, the presentation is not presented. Ma'am, we are not able to see the presentation. But ma'am, I can see the presentation. Yes. yes, it is visible. Those who cannot see, I think you have some issues. Those who cannot so see this is can rejoin children. Yes. If you are facing some network problem, that's why. So this is one application of STEM coding. Everybody y'all have heard of Python, but it is just not a topic of the computer subject. So where do we find applications of coding? Ma'am, please go to the next slide. I have region ma'am, but still I can't see the presentation. Uh, then I think you need to leave because we will be, uh, means others can uh, view it. Okay. Yes, ma'am, I can you see the presentation. Children, I think y'all are not behaving the way y'all are supposed to. So we will have Python applications in web and internet, internet development, desktop applications, 
scientific numeric application software development those who are interested in making gaming apps 3d graphics and also business applications so next slide these are just a few companies that use python so why we are stressing on all these slides are trying to show you Quora, Spotify, NASA, YouTube, Google, Yahoo, uh, Uber, Pinterest, IBM, edX. These are very few, common, few of the very common names. They all use Python. So every program that is run, it has to be coded. And this coding message or language is through Python. Um, next slide. So the broad benefits of coding are make your own, you can make your own website, become a career coder, or even start your own business. So this is what uh, STEM does to you in your lives. This part of the presentation is the most interesting part that is using makerspace kits. Now you can see in the picture, there are small uh, pieces over there in the box. So what do we need to do? Using our STEM application knowledge, we will assemble them together to make different projects. It can be a circuit. So we need to, do, we need to know what is a circuit. We can build, build some machines out of it. There are other kids who build machines out of it. So we need to have an idea what is a machine, how is it constructed. So I would now like to uh, request Arunava Ganguly, he's a student of the Presidency University, uh, to explain the few uh, kits and uh, tools we have using STEM, uh, STEM knowledge. Over to you, Arunavo. Uh, I think he, had, uh, he has left because of some power cut in his area. Um, please uh, go to the next slide. I'll only explain it. Yeah, Makerspaces is the uh, name of the building blocks which make these blocks for students who are interested in STEM, where STEM needs to be applied. So basically, it is reflective of real life and it is learner-centered. Next slide, please. Characteristics of maker education, so uh, it uh, facilitates interest, it uh, has incul inculcates collaborative learning community, it builds social emotional skills, so all of it the same thing, so this is just a reflection of a STEM education, application of STEM education. Now next slide. Yeah, as I said, so we have to know what is an electric circuit to use few of those uh, kids. So everyone knows right now, I think in class eight, that a, a circuit is a closed path, okay, where electrons can flow from and return to an energy source. So here we have a battery where it has, which has a positive and a negative terminal. It has to be connected together. It has to be closed as it is written here, closed path. Only then we can light a bulb or a bell can ring or some other uh, things as per the uh, block uh, instructions, it can be done. Next one. So here you will find the application of the electric circuit. This is the name of the block is Nin Little Bits Student Set. Next one. Yeah, electronic snap circuit. So it is uh, to make an electric circuit out of these pieces of uh, pieces that is visible in the picture. It is very interesting in a way that it is uh, it can be joined like a button. So that is why the snap circuit. You just click together two pieces and then you can complete the circuit. So just uh, what is important for completing this block is your idea of a circuit. Of course, robotics class six and seven is into robotics already. So what is a robot? It is a machine. It is a machine, actually, usually, usually one programmable by a computer that can carry out complex series of actions automatically. So we are uh, having an idea that once the coding, the programming part is fed into the robot, it run, and it has to be actually, it is a circuit. 
Inside also it is a circuit, so it has to be a closed path. Once the switch is on, it can perform the various fu functions as per the coding. And once again, we, when we don't want the work to be done, we will switch it off. Next one. This is a very important uh, application or very uh, nice ac application of uh, robots here. You can see few differently colored blocks over here. They can be joined together. And the most interesting part of these blocks are they have sensors in them. So what is the use of sensor? When it is switched on, here also children, they have circuits completed. OK, we need to complete the circuit. So once it's switched on, it will start moving. And when it hits a barrier, it can be a wall, it can be a desk, even it can be a finger. If it hits a barrier, it will automatically change its direction and it will move in the other way. So it's very nice It's uh, to see them you know, rolling over and uh, changing its direction. This is another uh, kit uh, using STEM application, Strawbees Maker Kit. You can see you have these straws by which you can make different shapes. You can create different structures like, like that of a crane or any other machine. So you have to know what is a crane and what is the structure of the crane. Same way you see uh, the picture itself shows you can build blocks out of it, but these are all machine blocks. So you have to have a little bit of idea what comes in which place, what is which part to be put in which place. Next slide. Pramita ma'am, please go to the next slide. Yeah. So artificial intelligence is a very important aspect of STEM education. Class 8, you all are all, already learning artificial intelligence. But if you keep it as just a part of your curriculum, then you cannot move forward. So a way of making computer, robot, or software, think, act, and learn, uh, sorry, think and act like a human. So application of AI in these type of kits, it is Ferro robot here. It is a very small uh, a little piece just like this, where we have some, uh, we need to connect to the computer and then the coding has to be fed in and then it will act like a robot. Same way, makey makey kit, you have to have the knowledge of the circuit and you can see in the left uh, picture, there are roots marked. Or even you can use some marker pens to mark these roots. So that acts as a sensor for these kit. If you have a ball over here, it will keep on rolling. So I hope uh, a little bit of idea I could uh, give regarding some uh, applications of STEM education. So after giving you this idea, I would like to know how many of you would like to attend such workshops in the future. So Rajasri ma'am has already posted a link in the chat box. Once again, children, please click on the link and uh, let us know how many of you would like to attend such workshops in the future where you need to have the idea of STEM and you can use those building blocks and make wonderful structures out of them. Done? Rajasri ma'am, if we can just see the poll. Yeah. So most of you want it. So let us, uh, we will uh, hopefully, we will be able to arrange something for you all. And accordingly, we will inform you all. OK, thank you so much, all of you. Uh, uh, and I hope a little bit of interest, extra uh, information could be given to you all to today's session. Uh, Julie Ma'am already spoke about her experience. I just showed you a few of these uh, slides where we have STEM application kits. I hoped all of you liked it. I would uh, request uh, Vice Principal Ma'am if she would like to say a few words. Uh, I think uh, ma'am is uh, not in no, the I'm there. Oh, I'm there. Thank you. Thank I'm you. I'm there. I've joined through uh, 
coordinator ma'am's ID. Okay. So I'm sure okay. uh, students, uh, you have heard through what these workshops will be about. We will also have other um, sessions in school so that we can use those um, uh, uh, kits, some of them. If not in a medical center, we will uh, make it available here in school so that all of you get an exposure of what they are. And in between, through in your classes, we will give you some links. You can go through those links and do your own research in the meanwhile. And um, as you have heard about uh, Professor Ma'am's journey and what Rinmoy Ma'am has said, I'm sure you will love it because uh, coding, and you all know it better than us, sometimes uh, we feel that you all are much smarter in technology than us. So you all will be enjoying. Let's hope for um, you know opening of schools and uh, our sessions. I really look forward to the sessions that we will be having out there at American Center. So with this, I would request our coordinator, ma'am, to propose the official vote of thanks for the day. Thank you, Vice Principal, ma'am, uh, and the members who are here for giving me the chance to give a vote of gratitude or a vote of thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. And good evening, though Ms. Basura is not there, but definitely our wishes are there for her. Social scientists have found that the fastest, fastest way to feel happiness is to practice gratitude. My heartfelt gratitude to our CEO, sir, Mr. S. L. Gupta for encouraging our school to go ahead with this project. A big thank you to our principal, Mrs. Vijaya Chaudhary, for providing encouragement to our teachers and our dear students. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for Professor Juhi Basu Roy. At this hour, also, she was present to motivate our children and give them a vivid explanation regarding STEM. I'm also here to wish my heartfelt thank you to Mrs. Madhumita Seal, Vice Principal BDMI, and who is the project leader of the STEM. I'm also very grateful to the students who are part of this project. And last but not the least, my Heartfelt gratitude to the parents who have encouraged their children to dream and to take a small baby step towards fulfilling their dream by being a part of this wonderful project. Thank you. And as we know, tomorrow is Mahalaya. I would like to wish each and every person who is part of the small boxes, Shubha Mahalaya and Please be safe during this time of Durga Puja. Thank you. Welcome. Nirmay ma'am, anything else from your side? No, no ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, we have come to the end of the session. And thank you students. Hope that we could uh, kindle a little bit of fire of STEM inside all of you. With that note. Uh, you can leave. Thank you, children. You may, you may Thank leave you very much. Platform. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.